Israel's Prime Minister has offered a vision for peace with the Palestinians. Two free peoples, two states, each with a flag, an anthem, a government, neither threatening the other. The response, the one word that's frustrated 60 years of hope for peace. The three Israeli prime ministers who preceded Benjamin Netanyahu were equally firm in their desire for a durable, lasting peace with the Palestinians. And they all received the same response. Ehud Barak offered the Palestinians a state in all of Gaza, more than 95% of the West Bank and Eastern Jerusalem. The response? No. Ariel Sharon withdrew the entire Jewish settler population from Gaza. He reiterated his commitment to a two-state solution. The response? No. Ehud Olmert spoke of a viable and democratic Palestinian state alongside the democratic state of Israel. We have to complete the Nepalese process this year, this year. The response? No. It's been the same answer for 60 years. When the United Nations voted to divide Palestine into Jewish and Arab states in 1947, the Arab side said no and declared war. With the relinquishing of the British mandate, Palestine is rocked by full-scale war as a new Jewish state is born. What Benjamin Netanyahu is facing is nothing new. And just as Israel has to deal with the chorus of no, so do the United States and other countries who, like Israel, want to bring this conflict to an end. Among the Middle Eastern leaders who dismissed Prime Minister Netanyahu was the president of Egypt, Hosni Mubarak. Netanyahu's speech aborts any chance of peace with the Palestinians, he said. Mubarak wasn't alone. The Palestinian leadership, including President Mahmoud Abbas, continued in their 60-year tradition of saying no. No is a word that echoes through the region. In school textbooks, maps don't include Israel. The Jewish connection to the land and the region is airbrushed from history. Children are taught to believe that a Palestinian state will rise in place of Israel, not alongside it. Notions like these strengthen the forces which thrive on conflict and war, like Hamas, which calls Israel the only enemy in the region. Like Hezbollah in Lebanon, which calls for the elimination of the Zionist entity and which maintains tens of thousands of deadly missiles poised to attack Israel. Like Iran, whose regime has given Hamas and Hezbollah millions of dollars in money and weapons, while crushing the democratic aspirations of its own people. More than land, more than water, more than borders, more than settlements. The main hurdle to peace in the Middle East is an idea that Jews have no right to their own state in a territory where they have lived throughout history. Some visionary Arab leaders have sought a different path, one that would eventually lead to a genuine peace based upon mutual respect. For this conflict to end, what's needed is a Palestinian leader who will abandon the language of martyrdom and struggle and who will finally say, after 60 years of no, yes.